Thank you, John, for being with us this morning. Based on your experience, is there something that you think the Biden administration and also Congress should be thinking about to address the humanitarian crisis that we're seeing play out across the southern border? Well, I would love to hear Congress and the administration talking about a surge of resources into the asylum system. Uh, unfortunately, it's something that I think is lost in the debate when we talk about walls and we talk about enforcement measures that really are designed to, to address the threats we faced in the past. Right now, we have people overwhelming our asylum system, close to a million pending cases backlogged in the immigration courts. I would love to see a surge of resources to knock out those claims uh, and restore the, the integrity, really, of our asylum system at the border. Uh, but look, I think the Biden administration does have a plan. The, the effectiveness of that plan, I think we're going to see on May 11th. Uh, but it's a, a combination of a carrot and stick approach, whereby the administration has modified the asylum rules in order to try to dissuade people from going to Mexico. And then at the same time, kind of creating these incentives or these pathways uh, that were just discussed for people to apply for asylum from outside of the country without the need to kind of trek through Mexico and present at the border. The effectiveness, as I said, though, we'll, we'll see in a, in a couple of weeks. And what do you like most about their plan? I mean, a couple of specifics here, increasing deportation, expanding the legal migration pathways available for those who are trying to cross the border. I mean, is there any one thing, if you were to prioritize, you would like to see? Well, I think it'll be interesting. It's, it's a novel approach, right? The idea is, hey, look, we recognize that we can't do much about this demand, right? I mean, the reality is there is still an active job market in this country, and we provide a safe place, you know, a better life. And that's what we want, right? And so because of that, we're going to be a magnet for migrants who are in very difficult conditions. We're facing violence, you know, instability, a lack of rule of law, and no economic opportunity. They're going to be drawn to this country, right? So recognizing that we can't do much about that or not in the short term, I think what the administration is doing is innovative, right? They're trying to say, here are some pathways through these migrant processing centers in, in the Northern Triangle. Here are the, the CBP-1 app, whereby people can make their application for an asylum claim through a through online, you know, through an app. We're going to try to create alternatives for you to present your claim without having to overwhelm us at the border. At the same time, you need to say, hey, we're going to crack down on you. If you don't make a claim, if you show up at this border and you haven't made a claim in Mexico, you're prima facie ineligible. Uh, look, it's a novel approach, and, and I think it's critical in the sense that it pulls away these kind of, you know, that we've been overwhelmed at our border, right? And that's Politically, but also practically, what's really been the biggest challenge over the last couple of years? This approach should address that, um, but but candidly, honestly, long term, we need to fund our asylum system to, to so that matches the resources we dedicate to it, matches the number of claims we receive annually, and we're, we're falls far short of that right now. Understood. I want to get your thoughts on the Republican House bill. This would require construction of a border wall, hire more border agents, give DHS the authority to expel migrants. Anything about their plan that you'd like to see uh, married and accompany the administration's approach? Yeah, I mean, certainly there are elements of their plan that I think would be effective. Obviously, look, these frontline officers have an incredibly difficult job. I had the good fortune of working with them for a number of years, and I can't tell you how difficult their, their job is. Obviously, increasing their pay, bonus structures for them, I am fully supportive of. Dedicating more resources to technology, I think that's a critical investment we need to make in our border security apparatus. But a lot of these ideas, I don't want to be critical of it, but are, have been around for a long time. They need to be paired with recognition that, again, rather than modifying the asylum laws, we're going to surge resources so we can continue to be this country that provides safe haven for people fleeing political persecution, but that we have the ability to ferret out those who have real claims, who are really fleeing persecution, versus those who are seeking to exploit you know, the fact that we're overwhelmed. So look, I would wish, I wish more than anything, that we were having a serious conversation about a comprehensive immigration bill that addressed all the elements of the system. But the sad truth is, Look, we haven't had a major piece of immigration legislation passed since the mid-1990s. Um, and I'm just not optimistic in this political environment we're in today. I think there's pretty much zero chance of any bill, Republican bill or Democrat bill, becoming law. Mm, that's unfortunate. I think that it, it's at least reassuring that we're talking about it and we're trying to talk about it daily. You have said that the current crisis that we're seeing started sort of at the tail end of the Obama administration, continued through the Trump administration. We're seeing it in the Biden administration. Has it gotten worse through the years? I mean, what do you attribute to some of the numbers we see? You know, look, there was a dip in the Trump administration when the pandemic hit, right? But the reality is, look, nothing happens at the border by accident. 
everything is driven by smuggling organizations. And beginning in about 2014, demand for Mexican nationals to cross the border. And that, that's, that's the era when you really heard talk about a wall and perhaps a wall and frankly technology were more needed because you had people sneaking into the country. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.